So, hello everyone. Very happy to be in Zurich for the next uh, OpenCast Summit, or the current one. Uh, we'll be talking about um, our custom portal for um, OpenCast, which is called Theograss Tube, um, and uh, specifically about our latest development, which is a different approach to live streaming. Um, let's start with some general um, properties of, of our portal. Um, it's a custom video portal. Uh, the idea was to have a portal kind of usability in the sense that you just uh, log in or, or don't log in and you browse videos uh, as a user. Um, should be an all-in-one uh, place to find videos. Um, should host uh, courses, events and, and different kinds of videos. So not only for courses. Um, host public and restricted videos. And um, this is not really a property, but um, uh, a restriction, the last, uh, last uh, point, that we were not, um, we couldn't use um, computers in our infrastructure in, in the lecture room. So we had to, to drop uh, the whole capture agent part of OpenCast. Um, so a few words about the history we started. Uh, the first launch of our uh, portal was uh, in October 2014, back then with Matterhorn 1.4. I won't uh, stay long, uh, linger long on, on these. Um, I mentioned it uh, also in Vienna last time. So February 2017, a major upgrade to OpenCast 2.2 with LTI. Um, um, also with use also of LTI plugin. Then uh, December 2017, OpenCast 3.x um, LTI plus um, AAI with our SibylNet um, uh, ID provider works uh, great. Um, and then in February 2018, um, we introduced this custom live stream feature, which was urgently needed, uh, which I will also be talking about a bit more in detail today and some further portal optimizations. Um, for example, um, it's not any longer possible to run um, a, a, a script through our search field. Um, September 2018 is uh, actually a current um, uh, OpenCast um, uh, status. Um, it's 5.x, I believe we are still at 5.1. Um, some optimization of uh, live channel management. I will talk about this um, uh, in the next moment. And this is actually ongoing, thus hence the three dots there. So moving local processing to the server. Um, because as I mentioned, we don't use the capture ag uh, agent part. So we, are we, we, we uh, manually, to a certain degree manually, um, manage and upload the videos to the portal, to the server. So a live stream solution. It's custom, which means it's independent from OpenCast, but it has an OpenCast twist, of course. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about it, probably. But this is not here. Um, um, so we introduced the idea of live channel. Instead of live events, we thought it would be nice to have something that is kind of fixed let's say, fixed placeholder for uh, for a live streaming that goes live when there is something live streamed and it's offline then when nothing um, happens. Um, the video delivery, um, as with our, um, uh, uh, also in the meantime for our uh, recordings, um, takes place through Wowza. Uh, we use the um, URL signing um, um, of Wowza to secure our own live streams. That was an important point. And, uh, and this is the twist, the last point, the o <laughs> OC twist, is that we take advantage of the OpenCast series in, uh, in the end to um, create these live channels and also to handle the metadata and, and the... Um, uh, access control. So how this happens or what is the idea behind it? Uh, OpenCast series versus live channels versus. So the typical use of uh, series is uh, to create a series in OpenCast in order to hold um, a certain group of uh, videos that have something, hopefully have something in common. Um, 
hand, our misuse, on the other hand, is to use this part of OpenCast uh, in order to create series that appear on our portal as live stream, <coughs> live stream channels. Uh, in that uh, way, we can use all the all what the series offers in OpenCast, uh, which mainly is the um, the management in the OpenCast portal in the admin UI, and also the um, access control list. So we can we can uh, edit all this. Uh, like with every with any other uh, video series in the admin UI and use that for also for the live for the live channels. So uh, different uh, types of live channels in uh, our scenario. Um, on the one hand, we have courses or events, um, specific live channels for a specific course. So if a course, if we know that a course. Uh, if they also want to live stream their, uh, their all of their recordings or some of the recordings, uh, then we um, create a live channel for this course, for this um, series course, actually. The same for the events. Event and course, um, please don't mix events with um, episodes. Uh, when I say events, I mean um, videos other than uh, lecture recordings other than course recordings like uh, for example now uh, conference videos or different event types and the the second type of live stream is the um, venue specific live um, live channel of live stream um, so we have some fixed um, um, live channels which are fixed to specific uh, venues lecture rooms of their grads and these are used internally. I will show you later um, what's the sense of all this. So if we start now, let's say we see how it works from different points of view. Um, a lecturer wants to um, start either a recording or a live stream. And in the lecture room itself, uh, there is a, we use question systems for that, usually, uh, actually pretty much everywhere and there is a touch panel like this one where uh, we've programmed um, um, also um, a tab for the recording streaming um, uh, control so there is a pretty much very simply um, start stop button for recording and an extra start stop button for, for live stream so everything uh, is handled right there in the lecture room we don't do anything automatically in our case um, what happens then uh, after the lecturer uh, uh, presses a button is in the case of recording, uh, first of all it's uh, stored locally uh, on the device and then it's automatically, okay this happens at least automatically, it's uploaded to a server through FTP at the moment. Uh, in the case of a live stream, it starts the stream from the recorder to Wowza. Its uh, room, uh, its venue has a unique um, stream name. So I have to talk a bit about our format. We use still we have to use our legacy format, which I which comes from the um, previous uh, generation of, of uh, Epiphone uh, devices. Um, the name, if I remember correctly, is Lecture Recorder X2, and um, it had an analog um, video input. Let me not talk about this. Uh, but it offered um, th the possibility to record uh, uh, two streams, two streams uh, next to each other. So two videos on one canvas, two conjoined videos on one canvas. So we have to still use this format for uh, hopefully only a few months still. Um, that's why I had to, um, uh, you know, think of a live streaming solution that also works with this format. So what we did. And this would be the next step, what happens in on Wowza, quite a quite, uh, few things. Um, so Wowza, it separates this one canvas with two streams, two videos. It separates the conjoined streams, while at the same time re-encoding them in um, three different qualities. So three qualities per, per stream. Um, and this is possible uh, with the help of the transcoder add-on. It's an add-on for Wowza. Um, handle different incoming streams accordingly. 
there are stream incoming stream presets that you can configure and while those are according to the name of a stream you can have a different um, encoding uh, or transcoding preset yeah. um, make streams available in HLS and MPEG dash which is a standard feature of, of Wowza and secure streams via URL sign -in. so the client on tube you select the desired live stream um, there is a part of on our server that uh, runs in the background um, it's a script that receives the data from the specific channel and does then uh, I'll show in the next slide exactly what it does but if this works correctly then the file player is loaded with the respective resources um, what happens now in this access control part um, we have two parts there two steps the first one uh, is a secure token creator for Wowza uh, it uses different parameters including the client IP to create a hash so that uh, you cannot really share the, um, the link to, to the live stream um, and also an opencast exchange handler because this script works really as a black box so you send, you send the information and you receive a hash but the problem in that case is if you manage to find your way to this black box then you might be able to to um, access the resource even if you don't you're not supposed to so we have a second step uh, the open exchange handler who which um, also collects the information from the session of the client and checks back with opencast with the server to see if that specific user is supposed to have access to that specific resource in order to avoid um, the problem I mentioned before um, so and the admin part would be to just manage live channels in the opencast uh, admin UI like with any normal video on demand series activate deactivate live channels and this happens uh, directly um, in the front end uh, in our part I can maybe show you if I have one minute how it this works and then reroute uh, resources so we have as I mentioned before this fixed uh, live channels which are the venues these are the only in, um, internally accessible and but you can see what's live and you can uh, link a live room to a course live channel for example um, and now would be the time maybe to make a short demo to show at least a bit how the server looks like or how the portal looks like so this would be the live okay doesn't work maybe no all right it doesn't work To close it. Okay, I will close PowerPoint completely to see what happens. I'll try to reconnect. Sorry for the recording. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's see if it's really works now oh it looks better a bit better <laughs> uh, what's wrong <laughs> okay uh, but okay I think it's, uh, it's stable now so you see on th on the left here um, so this is the, la the okay this is the um, this is Teograd tube yeah? um, here you see that we are in the live uh, sector and we have here I'm not logged in now so these are three public channels yeah? um, they appear pretty much like the series uh, in the other two uh, sectors maybe I'll show you very quickly if I go to the courses you will see here a list of videos and here the public um, courses uh, series so if you select one then you will see the respective 
um, uh, videos. So if I go back now to live, I can show you how it works if I log in first. So we have the super left method to log in. And now you can see my name here. And as I'm an admin, I can see more channels. These are the venue, the fixed venue live channels. And this here is the edit button where I can select a master and slave um, streams for Paella. And I can do it in a convenient way by linking to a specific uh, venue. For example, lecture room P1, click save. Uh, and now this course is linked to this uh, venue. And I should probably not leave it like this right now. What I wanted to do before I thank you and ask for questions, maybe try to show you this s the, the flexibility of this system. So there is a, an app from um, Wowza, it's called GoCoder, that you can install on your phone, and you can live stream to Wowza. So in our case, we can pretty much use any source that Wowza can take and post it right uh, on our portal. So it doesn't have to be specific, recorded in a specific, specific lecture room. Uh, it can be pretty much anything from anywhere in the world. So um, if I'm lucky enough, as we know, the live demos <laughs> have kind of a history of not working. Um, this might even work. So it should be on the test, right. Okay, but at this point I will thank you for your attention and maybe ask for questions. I have one question because time is running out. Is there one question? If there's no, oh, check there is. Oh, but we're live, look. <laughs> so the status changed to just live. Just in time. <laughs> and maybe we can see if it really works. I signed a document. <laughs> I'm <laughs> I signed a document for the for what I'm streaming. Anyway, so you can see that um, it offers this kind of flexibility to be able to stream from wherever you want and to post it on that very same portal. Hopefully, we'll see something more meaningful. Yeah, okay. Let's say it's okay. I'm sorry for the dizziness. <laughs> so um, I think I don't need to keep it running. So I'm stopping it. It will stop in a few seconds. Can we actually consider this as a TV channels? I mean, in analogy, you have fixed channels and you just redirect the content to these predefined channels? You could use it in that way. It's pretty much uh, the flexibility is... Uh, um, uh, well that, that's maybe the best part of it. That you can really also use it like this, like a channel. It's, it's called anywhere a live channel. Yeah? But you can, for, for a single event, you can even create a series and use it as a live channel just for a single event, create it, live stream it, and then delete it and forget about it. So you can either, ha either have fixed um, live channels or use them pretty much as a as live event. So, sorry, like? I, I have to interrupt you there because we're running late already. Thank you, Ipasias, for the Thank you. presentation.